Welcome to the second week of the Road to Whack Vegas. I'm your host, Rachel V. Hill. Now, last week was full of buzzer beaters, and you can check out all of that action on our weekly roundup. So let's move ahead to this week. We've got a big matchup with 13 and 4 New Mexico State traveling to 12 and 6 Seattle U. We've got Johnny McCants and Morgan Means, and we'll talk about those guys in just a second. But you can watch our spotlight game on Thursday, January 17th at 7 p.m. Pacific Time on ESPN+. Plus. Now we have to talk about Johnny McCants. Last week, he might have made the play of the year. Check this one out. Johnny McCants at midcourt for the win. He got it! I mean, come on, guys. It was only his second three-pointer of the year, but he did say that he's been practicing that shot for a long, long time. McCants missed the start of the season while recovering from an injury and still hasn't started a game. But that hasn't stopped him from leading the Aggies in blocks with an average of one per game, which is also third in the WAC. Now for Seattle U, Morgan Means. He's first in points with 283 total for the Red Hawks, and he also leads the team in steals. You also don't want to send Means to the line. He made 27 straight free throws before ending his streak against Grand Canyon. But he also went 16 of 16 on December 29th to match an SU record that's been around since 1979. Now looking at the matchup between the two teams, NM State is coming off of two big wins against Grand Canyon and CSU Bakersfield. CSUB out-rebounded the Aggies 37 to 36 and forced the Aggies at a disadvantage for the first time ever this season on the offensive boards. But NM State is still 4-1 while being out-rebounded by their opponents. As for Seattle U, they are 0-3 in conference play after starting off the season 12-3 for their best start in more than 50 years. The Red Hawks will be without Matea Cavas, who suffered a leg injury in the Grand Canyon game. He's expected to be out for a few weeks. New Mexico State currently holds a 14-3 lead in the all-time series, but SU defeated the Aggies at home 73-63 last year. Now after the break, we're going to be joined by Sed Bonner, who is an analyst for the SU-NM State game on Thursday night. Sit tight and we'll be right back. In the WAC, we take pride in our character. When we win, we win with humility. And when we lose, we lose with dignity. We know that how we act toward our opponent, the officials, and the fans defines the game. Not the scoreboard. And we know that showing respect will always outweigh any trophy. Because when we focus on fair play, we can't lose. Good sportsmanship is what unites us. We are the Western Athletic Conference. As promised, we are now joined by Sed Bonner, who is going to be the analyst for the Seattle U New Mexico State game. Thank you so much for coming in today with me. Thanks for having me. It's awesome. All right, let's talk about that game. Biggest takeaway from the game you think that's going to happen? Uh, you know, Seattle U and their three straight losses, they've shot the ball 36%, I believe, and that's not going to help them. They've got to shoot at a high clip. They've got some guys that can get it done. Morgan Means. Can, I mean, they've got some players that can score. Now, they're going to have all those guys show up. They have to show up in order for them to have a chance against New Mexico State. That just runs at you with wave upon wave of good athlete and length, and they've got to score every chance they get. Let's talk about New Mexico State. Johnny McCants. Did you see the buzzer beater? Yes, I did. <laughs> and did you see the human highlight film earlier in the year? I mean, this guy's like uh, a, a highlight waiting to happen. He's super explosive and athletic, but you don't expect him to be the guy to take a shot like that to win a game like that. I mean, it's Amazing. Second three-pointer all season. Yeah, yeah, and he doesn't, he doesn't do it often. He's, he's probably one of the more unselfish guys uh, on the court that I've watched play. He's great around the basket, around the rim, but he's a guy that will drive inside and look to kick out so Terrell Brown or one of those guys can, can shoot a three. He's a very unselfish player. Coaching-wise, what play do you think is going to happen here? I, I think both of these coaches are, are extremely fiery. They get after their guys. Um, uh, very intense. Um, you know, I, I, with uh, Kalas being out, possibly for Seattle U, that hurts him. If he's in the ball game, that gives him a chance. It's one of your top scorers. Um, it's going to be tough. They've, they've got to have a play a perfect game, and that means on both ends of the floor. Defensively, they've got to keep the uh, Aggies off the boards and, and not allow them to get second chance opportunities. Then they'll have a shot. Uh, Jans is just, I mean, he's in your face. Uh, <laughs> He's in your face. I would love to play for him when I was playing about it. I mean, he challenges those guys, and they tend to respond for him. Now let's talk about WAC Vegas a little bit. You're going to be out there with us. What's the best part for you? I think the, the, the finality of the season and just watching the kids play as hard as they do throughout that tournament. Do you think, though, that anyone can beat New Mexico State in the tournament? 
uh, Cal Baptist whooped them pretty good at home. I mean, you know, they're, they're not a high, New Mexico State is not a high shooting clip team from the field. They don't, they don't shoot extremely well because they take so many threes. Um, their shooting percentage inside the arc is extremely high. Um, they've got McCants and Chua who shoot well over 60%, like, but they take a lot of threes. If they're not hitting those threes and you get a few players on the other team, teams get hot and, and defend really well, somebody could beat them. My dad always used to say that you always play the game no matter what because you never know who can come out on top. Absolutely, absolutely right. And, you know, a lot of people, I feel like, with them being number one in the preseason media polls and then coming out and they were expecting them just to whoop conference play uh, and then CBU did, they put a stop to it real quick. I, I actually had them, uh, their last non-conference game at CSU. And I saw an absolute clinic. Yeah. Like, I mean, they put on a clinic. And this was without Eli Chua was home uh, celebrating the birth of his, her, his daughter. Congratulations. Yes, um, no kidding. Congrats. This, he was at home. He wasn't even there. So they... I mean, when I say they put on a clinic, they, CSU could not do anything. I was at that game, too. That's, 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 that's my school. Rammies. That's your school. Uh, <laughs> they couldn't do anything. They shut them down, um, just applied pressure upon pressure, hit big shot after big shot. And after that game, I was like, oh, my God, this is, like, is one of the best teams, probably not in the conference, but in America. Yeah. And then, sure enough, the next week, that balloon just – I agree, and I think the WAC tournament this year is going to be even better than last year. Absolutely. With all the teams that are just dominating right now, I'm very, very excited for the men's side of the WAC tournament. Um, let's move on to you, though. You have quite a crazy background in sports. Let's talk four collegiate sports that you played Division One. correct? Uh, we were, most of them were Division, Division One. one. Uh, football, we were Division two, two at the time still. Uh, so let's see, let me think. Volleyball, we were Division, Division one. one. We played with SC, UCLA. Uh, I ran track, so that was D1 as well. And uh, basketball, we were D2 as well. Okay. Yeah. That's so it was a fun. lot. It was, it was a lot. Um, but they were just great opportunities, and it, literally I needed to keep myself moving. <laughs> How do you manage like, practice schedules? You have off-season, off-season workouts for you all know, of those sports. I, well, the only thing that, you know, so, so the first two, um, football and basketball, I would literally we would have our last game sometimes Saturday in November. Basketball would already be going on, and I'd just kind of jump right in and, and start practicing and playing, and it'd take me a few weeks to get my basketball legs. I was in shape, but, you know, basketball legs are a lot different than any other legs out there. So uh, it would take me a while. And then, so my last year on campus is when I um, played volleyball and I, I high jumped at the same time. So, like, we had a couple games at uh, – couple matches at Long Beach State. Well, we'd have a track meet at Long Beach State, so I'd go jump in the track meet and then go over to the game or to the volleyball match as well. So it was fun, man. It was, uh, it was some of the best times of my life, and, and I have some, some lifelong friends uh, from, from the old Matadome and Matador days. And then you graduated, and you went on to work with the Falcons. I, I did. I started, I actually, once I was finished with school, I actually tried out for, uh, which is crazy, I actually... Uh, went and tried out for the Oakland A's in Winter League Baseball. And it, so I played a couple of seasons of Winter League Baseball with him um, and didn't pan out. So I went to a tryout and for arena football, made it, stayed in Arizona for a while, and then got eventually found my way up to the NFL and back down and back up, back down, back up. And just I was, I was really blessed to be in the right, right spot at the right time. Preparation-wise, how do you prepare? Um, just, you said watching games. Do you I, watch multiple games from the I previous do, games? I do. Um, I'll try to go three games or two and a half games, and then um, I like to get the last sound bites from the coaches from their last games. You know, they have the coaches' mm -hmm. media talk, so I, I try to get where they're feeling because sometimes they'll touch back on a few games. If, mm -hmm. if they've got something going on, they kind of hit a couple things, and, and that's kind of kind of it. Just kind of read, and I've, uh, I get, get charts made, and... Um, they make things, makes life easy for me. So I can read and spend time watching film. Yeah, no kidding. It definitely does. Um, well, that's all I have for you. We're super excited, obviously, awesome. for the game on Thursday yeah, night. It's be a lot of fun. Also, WAC Vegas. And you guys, the tickets are now available for WAC Vegas. So make sure that you go and purchase those from Ticketmaster. And we'll got to have a good preview for you right now as we come up. And then I'll be back in just a couple of minutes. So thank you so much again. We Thanks, had so Rachel. much fun. Appreciate it. I Thanks know. Thank me. you. All righty, guys, we'll catch you in just a second. Adrenaline, passion, triumph. 
moments that'll never be forgotten. The 2019 WAC Basketball Tournament at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. March 13th through the 16th. Be a part of the madness. Get your tickets now at orleansarena.com. Welcome back to the Road to WAC Vegas on the women's side. We've got a good matchup on Thursday night as Utah Valley takes on UTRGV. The Wolverines are still undefeated in WAC play. That's a 7 p.m. Central time on the WAC Digital Network. Don't miss it. You'll be able to see Jordan Holland who leads the Wolverines in points with 209. She's second in rebounds and third in three-pointers. She's also got the seal the deal steal against Seattle U to help UVU take home that W and stay undefeated in WAC play. On the UTRGV side, Adele Turk leads the Vaqueros in points and steals. She's shooting exactly 500 in three-pointers. This matchup will be a good one, especially since the programs are 14 and 14 all time against each other. UTRGV had the last laugh as they played each other back in February of last year. The Vaqueros took the game 71 to 64. UVU is off to a perfect conference record so far this season, while UTRGV is 2-1 with one loss to CSUB. Utah Valley currently leads the WAC in free throw percentage, field goal percentage, and rebounding defense. And as for UTRGV, here's an interesting little stat for you. The Vaqueros have scored 1,000 points this season. Their opponents have scored 1,001 points this season. And checking out some of the other good matchups for the week. Another good men's game on Thursday night is Kansas City heading to Bakersfield, California. The Roos are 2-0 with the Roadrunners 3-1 in conference play. That game is at 7 p.m. Pacific time on ESPN3. Then comes Saturday, New Mexico State heads to Utah Valley where the Wolverines haven't lost at home in 21 games. That is a 7 p.m. Mountain Time tip-off on the WDN. On the women's side, CBU travels to Kansas City on Thursday to take on the Roos. That game is at 6 p.m. Central Time on the WDN. The Roadrunners are 2-2 in conference play, while UMKC is 2-0. So last week, we had a competition to win two all-session tickets to the WAC Vegas tournament. I asked who would score the most points in one game over the weekend. The answer was Kansas City's Erica Mattingly, but nobody guessed her. So we did another question. First person to tell me who scored the most amount of points total over the weekend and how many they scored got the tickets. And we finally got our winner. So I want to see some more of you guys out in Vegas, so let's give away a few more tickets. I sent out a tweet on Tuesday. After Johnny McCann's buzzer beater last week, I want to know what's your most memorable basketball shot. The WAC staff and I are going to vote on the top four on Monday, and then you will get the opportunity to vote for the most memorable. You can reply back to my tweet. My handle is at RachelVHill24, and make sure you use the hashtag HeyRachel. Tournament tickets are on sale for the WAC tournament too, so check out Ticketmaster to get yours, and let me know if you're going out to Vegas for the tournament. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode of The Road to Whack Vegas. For the WDN, I'm Rachel Vigil. Mm -hmm.